hope you're alright. In today's video, I'm going to give you five do's and five don'ts of the low FODMAP diet. So my first do is to do it with a dietitian. Now I'm saying this because this is incredibly, incredibly important. The low FODMAP diet is one way you have to restrict very heavily at first and then reintroduce foods. And that is something that is quite complex and quite difficult to do, especially if you're doing it entirely on your own with no understanding, just some stuff you found on the internet or stuff that your GP has like just printed out because that happens a lot and you shouldn't do it like that. That's just not the way. A dietitian can help you with the whole restriction thing. When you're taking food out of your diet, you know, lots of different types of food, you could become deficient in things, for instance. My second do is to follow the Monash University app. Now, Monash University actually came up with the low format diet, so they know their stuff and the app just lists loads of different foods that you can and cannot eat and not just sort of a yes and a no to a food but also the portion sizes that you can have which is so so important the low FODMAP diet it's not just you can't eat this at all and you can eat this completely it might be that you can eat a small amount of this or a larger amount of this so it's a really useful app my third do is to keep yourself and the Monash University app up to date because things do change and the app itself will often update just like any other app on your phone so you can press update and also their website's really good because they will give like, a, they have a little, like a little blog and they show when things update, things do change and it's really important for yourself that you don't just assume that things are always the same. There are loads of foods, I think I remember like for instance broccoli used to be a lower portion size like a year ago and now you can have slightly more just because they've done some more investigating at Monash University and found that things are different now. So definitely keep yourself up to date, you don't want to be missing out on foods that you should be able to eat or eating too much of what you shouldn't. My fourth do is to cook from scratch and, especially at first, eat at home as much as you can. Now, cooking from scratch is really important because you get to know what's in your food. If you're just buying stuff and not properly looking at the ingredients, for instance, you won't realise what's in your food. So, loads of things that you would never ever expect have, for example, onion powder and garlic powder in them. And so, by cooking from scratch, you get to know that and that kind of helps you as well when you do eat out, that you know what you kind of probably can eat and what you can't eat. And I'm definitely not saying don't eat out at all. It's just at first, I personally found it a lot easier to eat at home as much as possible. And then when I felt a bit more comfortable and when I was further into the diet outside of the elimination phase, it was much, much easier to eat out. But at first, try your best to eat at home. My final do is to follow me on Instagram and across other social media channels and also just go and check out my blog because I put loads of recipes up there which are low FODMAP because I need to be able to eat them. Um, and also lots of products and stuff as well really useful. Um, I'll also put in the description below a link to some other useful sources as well because obviously it's not just all about me although this is my channel um, but yeah if you follow me on Instagram and if you've got any questions or anything just DM me and I'm always happy to help. My first stone is to never reintroduce foods ever. So the low FODMAP diet has an elimination phase which is six to eight weeks long where you eliminate foods for a while and then after that six to eight weeks, you reintroduce them. That's why it's just a phase in the diet. It's not like the entire diet, it's just a phase. So after that, you should be reintroducing foods to work out what you can eat. It's a positive thing, it's not a negative thing. Um, and yeah, so definitely, definitely don't just never reintroduce foods again. You need to reintroduce them, that's the whole point. My second don't is don't just assume that the low FODMAP diet is all about being onion and garlic free. It just isn't. There is so much more to the low FODMAP diet. There are so many high FODMAP foods in different categories and different this and different that, that although onion and garlic are high FODMAP, they're things that I personally, at this moment in time, can't eat. There is loads more. And you just have to remember that, that, you know, the diet is very, very big. And it's not just about onion and garlic at all. Thirdly, don't follow the advice of anyone except a registered dietitian. Obviously, I'm sitting here in front of you now talking about the low FODMAP diet, but I'm telling you about my personal experiences and that's what I like to do. That advice should only come from a registered dietitian, no one else. My fourth don't is don't start the low FODMAP diet at a point where you know you can't stick to it. So for instance, if you're going on holiday or Christmas is coming up or a wedding or something, some sort of occasion where you're really looking forward to and you know that there's gonna be lots of food and everything like that where you can't really control the circumstances too much and you want to enjoy yourself because it is difficult in those times, especially at the very beginning. So just pause and enjoy your Christmas, enjoy your holiday and then maybe start it afterwards. My fifth don't is don't start the low FODMAP diet unless you have a diagnosed reason. You don't wanna start it just because 
someone else's or because you've heard about it on the news or in the media or on social media you should be doing it because you know a doctor a registered dietitian has advised you to do it so make sure that's the case don't just do it because you fancy it it's a medical diet and it's there to help with a diagnosed problem so ensure that you do it for the right reason i really hope that you found this video interesting if you have give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel and go and follow me on instagram and obviously if you've got any other your own do's and don'ts, leave them in the comments below. Thanks so much and I'll see you next time. Bye!